Hey guys, this is Marcos for FightHubTV.com. I'm here with Chris the Nightmare Ariola as he awaits his anticipated heavyweight clash with Thomas Adamic at their Citizens Business Bank Arena in Ontario, California. Now, Chris, we know that Adamic's going to come out, try to use his hand speed, try to use his quickness. What's your game plan for that night? Uh, my, my, my main thing is I got to hit him, got to pop in the mouth right away. <clears throat> gotta, I got to use my jab. Right? I got to solidify my jab. Right? And once I pop in the mouth, I want him to fucking think, oh shit, you know, what the hell is going on here? You know, I want him to question why is he in the ring with me. Now, you've called uh, Adamic and um, I saw in some of the press conference quotes, uh, a medicated heavyweight. Now, uh, elaborate on that comment. Why do you think he's a medicated heavyweight? All right, you know what? I said medicated. What I really meant to say was supplemented. <laughs> you know, because I just didn't get the thought out quick enough. I, I believe he's a supplement heavyweight, you know. He is not a natural heavyweight. You know, just like Bernard Hopkins saying he's going to find the heavyweight division. He's not a natural heavyweight. He's going to be, he's going to, you know, take his protein, take his vitamins, take whatever he has to do to become a heavyweight. You know, anybody could be a be heavyweight. Pavlik could be a heavyweight for one, two. You know, he's not a natural heavyweight. I'm a natural heavyweight. I walk around at 260, mm. you know. Do you think because of that now, um, are you expecting Adamic to hurt you at all? You think because he's not a natural heavyweight that he, he, he won't have any power? No, nah, you know, it, anybody could knock somebody out, man. A, a guy that weighs 147, he hits me in the right spot, I'm going to get knocked out. But that's not, that's not my plan, you know. My plan is to, I, I'm in the hurt business, you know. My job's to hurt him and not be hurt. Now, in the, the nickname stage and everything like that, when you're coming up, you know, we know that your nickname's The Nightmare. Well, did you ever think of any other nicknames? How is that process with boxers when they're coming up with their nicknames? My nickname has nothing to do with boxing at all. Nothing. Nothing, man. What happened was me and my best friend, we were going to go out this one night. We were going to go get haircuts, and uh, I didn't want to wait on his sister to get me a haircut. She, but she cuts great hair, and I let this old, old lady cut my hair, and... She gave me a frohawk at the time, and that shit wasn't fashionable back then. <laughs> so I got home and I was like, "Fuck!" Shaved my head. I went home. I just shaved my head. The time I had a lot of acne. My friend, you know, he's six five and he talked like this. Fuck, dog! You look like Freddy Krueger. That's I saw. That's how we talk, man. Six five, big dude, man. And uh, and went from Freddy, and then to Krueger, and then just went to Nightmare. So it's just an involvement of a name. It has nothing to do with boxing at all. That's a hilarious uh, story. I can't imagine you with a frohawk, man. Neither, neither can I. That's why I shaved my head, man. And, and it was like back in like 2001, 2000, you know. Ain't nobody had frohawks back then. You've decided to train at home this time for this training camp. Why did you uh, decide to do that? I trained at home my last training camp also for uh, a bright mental Think about it, man. There's nothing like home. There's, you know, you know how uh, um, Dorothy says there's no place like home. There isn't, man. You could train 20 miles, 30 miles away from home, but there's still no place like home. First of all, Big Bear, I hate that place with the passion. It's like being in prison. You know, I trained in the valley. Yeah, it was cool, but I just hate traffic. I can't stand traffic. A lot of fighters go up to places like Big Bear, secluded so places to to get away from distractions. Um, how have you been able to handle that distraction-wise being at home? I, I need distractions. You know, I'm a, I'm a dude. I'm, I'm always in the run. I'm always hustle and bustle type of dude, man. I need to take care of stuff during the day. I can't just sit around my house and just twiddle my thumbs, you know. I like being, like, you know, going out, paying my bills. I like going out shopping, going buying some shoes. I like doing stuff. I cannot just stand still in one place. To me, it's boring. I don't like thinking about boxing if I don't have to. You know, boxing... I take care of that in the gym, whenever I work out in the morning and whenever I work out in the evening, that's it. Other than that, I don't want to think about boxing. I don't want nothing to do with boxing. Boxing, leave that shit in the gym, and that's it. For one, you know, when you came into that Klitschko fight, you were in great shape. The other fight with Minto, you know, a lot of people criticized you, said you weren't as, as in good shape as you were for that fight, and then you were with Klitschko. This fight, you're looking really, really slim. What's the extra motivation coming in this time? Well, um, the Klitschko fight, you know, in that fight, that's the first fight I ever had a strength and conditioning coach in uh, Daryl Hudson. And I, I learned a lot from that fight, you know. I actually came in that fight in that camp around the, the mid-90s, 290, 295 around there. And I had to, his job that fight was basically to cut my weight, man. And it was, you know, it was trouble, man. And it was, you know, it's something I'm not proud of. And then in the mental fight, I weighed in at 263. 
But in that fight, if you look at a side-by-side -side picture of the mental and the and the um, Klitschko fight, my body looks a lot better in that, that fight than it did in the Klitschko. Now, in uh, your press conference, um, I'm going to quote verbatim what you said. Um, said you'd like to thank Corona for making you a heavyweight. Now, I want to ask you, man, have you had a sip of alcohol in this whole training camp? No, man. You know what? I never drink when I'm in training camp. Never, never, ever, ever, nothing. I never do. That's one thing I'm very, very adamant about is not drinking. And if anybody offers me a drink, I get mad. I get really pissed because I don't like people being like that toward me. I don't drink. And as, as far as my uh, quote, <laughs> Corona did become make me a heavyweight. I'm not going to lie, man, because you know what? I won the National Roller 2001 at uh, 178. After that, I started drinking. I started partying. I started drinking a lot of Coronas, you know, and eating my eating. And next thing you know, I'm a heavyweight. So, thank you, Corona. <laughs> no Alberto stops this training camp? Nah, man. I didn't have no time for Albertos, man. <laughs> nah. Now we know uh, you're focused. You're looking in really, really great shape. Do you predict a knockout for this fight? Yes. Every fight. Every fight, I expect a knockout. But also in every fight, I train to go for 12 rounds. But in this fight, man, I just believe that this, this is a fight that I have to showcase everything that I have, man. I need to start showcasing that. In my last fight, I did a little bit against a mentor. I was able to use my lateral movement. And now in this fight, I have to do the same. Now, what do you make of the recent comments, uh, recent pitter-patter back and forth talk uh, between Hay and Klitschko? To me, um, I have no respect for uh, David Hay. As a fighter, I do. You know, now he earned my respect by beating John Reese in the way that he beat him. Now he earned my respect by that. But as far as all that talking, all that nonsense, it's a bunch of bullshit. It is, man. Just make the fight. You want to fight, you make the fight happen. Just that easy, you know. If I want to fight somebody, I'll go in the backyard and beat their ass. I don't care. I don't, I don't need to be back talking this and that. You know, he already got two shots at their, at their fight. He got a shot at Vitaly and he shot at Vladimir and he pulled out of both fights. Why? Because he got a yeast infection. You know, he, this guy, he could talk and say all oh, this, this, I'm the best, I'm the best. If he was the best, he would have proved it already. 